And yeah, if you've heard of this sound before of Ojim Dada back in 2000 when the internet was first introduced. Okay, everybody? Alright. Well, for those of you, welcome to Web 3.0. Now, before I start, I want to talk about what actually NFTs are and who here has heard of NFTs before? And how much would you be willing to pay for this NFT? Here! <laughs> Well, you could actually buy it for this amount of money. And it's part of one of the largest NFT collections in the world, called the Board Ape Yard Club Collection, in which one single NFT is $250,000. So an NFT is an acronym that stands for non fungible tokens. So let me explain that to all those old people that are looking at me with black faces right now. <laughs> So the money that we have in the world right now is interchangeable, which means that if you have a 100 RMB banknote, it would not matter if you have one or another, since they are all the same, which is fungible. Whereas with NFTs, they are all unique and different to each other, which makes them non-fungible. Now that we've understood that, we need to understand what decentralized means. So in the world, we have banks that are able to verify the validity of our money, and this is called centralized, in which there is only one person in charge of doing all of this. Whereas with NFTs, they are on cryptocurrencies and blockchains. A blockchain is a network of interconnected computers that are able to talk to each other and like, communicate ta a transactions process. So basically anybody who has access to the internet would be able to see any transaction that happens. So an example of this would be the Ethereum blockchain called Etherscan, in which you can see the wallet addresses of people that make transactions, as well as the price and what time they were purchased at. All this is important for the transparency of NFTs, as well as the proof of ownership, which is similar to how fingerprints work. So we, we, all, we all remember when we used our fingerprints to access our phones. This was because our fingerprint is unique to only us, and only we would be actually able to access our phones then. This is similar to how NFTs work in the way that if you have an NFT, only you are able to own that because it is linked to you, to your wallet address on the blockchain. So to put things into perspective, if you were to take a picture of the Mona Lisa, and print it out, you would have an exact replica of the Mona Lisa. But this does not mean that you are actually able to sell the painting as the real authentic painting, since you don't actually own that. This is exactly how NFTs work. Because if you own an NFT, no one else can just try to go take a photo and sell that, because they don't actually have the ownership of that on the blockchain. And since NFTs are just a token, as the name says, non-fungible tokens, they can be represented as anything. So that includes videos, uh, music, GIFs, tickets, and membership cards. So in the future, say for example you were go to go to a concert or to like a football match, you could use an NFT as a ticket. So the metaverse, which has become a quite and buzzword around the world has gained attraction and fame, especially being a creative outlet. But more on that later. The, co the company previously named Facebook, now called Meta, introduced, introduced a, the metaverse with a long video in October of 2021, explaining all the possible features that would be possible in this digital world. So this included things like working, socializing, entertainment, and so on. And you would be able to access through the use of VR, virtual reality, as well as haptic features. These haptic features would allow us to be able to have a sensation of actually touching things and involving more senses into the digital world. So for example, if you were to have an animal on your hand, you would not only be able to see that animal, but you would also be able to feel like the fur of the animal and the weight of the animal through different contractions that the globe can make. Shortly after, Nike, big companies like Nike and Roblox were quick to purchase digital real estate in the metaverse. This would be a quite popular um, feature in the 
metaverse because it would allow people to walk around and be able to go to shops and their homes. Some digital land is already actually on sale in the metaverse right now in the form of NFTs, sandbox. So here you can see an example of this, in which the small art square in the middle of the screen is actually a plot of land you can buy for around $10,000. So who here would actually want to buy some digital land? Okay. So when humankind first came together to form societies and governments, we created uh, currencies to be able to have a value and buy goods for. This is very similar to how NFTs work in the fact that they are very subjective in what actually becomes successful or not. And why would people actually care so much about this and spend so much money on these NFTs? Well, similarly to how people are wanting blue verified check marks on Twitter Instagram it is all about the flex that people receive from having a highly respected or rare NFT. An example of this is also that people are buying expensive shoes, clothes, cars, and homes all because it is a, it's a possibility of showing our wealth, which is the exact same in the metaverse. However, this also is, on the flip side, a way of making a viable solution for creating an economic and just society in which people are able to earn money. This is because cryptocurrencies are able to eliminate any unlawful government actions like corruption and inflation to money. And furthermore, with banks in real life right now that we have, the, the money that we get is sometimes not able to be given back since there might be a high demand of withdrawals cause a banking crisis, since banks are always wanting to give out loans and keep money flowing. This will not actually happen with cryptocurrencies, since they are all liquid and there's always an excess amount of this. Um, now, now that we've understood that, we can talk about like why, why NFTs are so reliable and stable. But, to immerse, but even if you aren't wanting to immerse yourselves right now into the metaverse, it is already such a significant, implanted part of our everyday lifestyles. Like all of our jobs right now could be possible in the metaverse. Like being an engineer, an architect, a student, a teacher, all of this could be possible in the metaverse. It will also allow us to immerse ourselves into everyday activities like gaming, fitness, education, and so on. And we all remember when we had to quickly adapt to being uh, our homes and working from them, as well as being quarantined. Furthermore, we already have cycling machines and growing machines at home that we use and are able to access instructors across the world and connect with other people. One of my favorite examples is that, is that there is a possibility of having video games and playing that with your friends and being able to fully immerse yourself into the actual character. So that would include the haptic features in which you get the sensation of being the character, as well as also having the hearing, the sound, which makes everything so much more realistic. Um, as, so when the internet was first introduced, we only had one side, one, one of our senses, which was our sight. Then with smartphones later on, we also implemented sound. But now with the metaverse, we are introducing more senses than ever before. Uh, uh, especially like living in China, we are already like using our phones every day with apps like WeChat and Alipay that we use for payment and health codes, and it's basically become a necessity for living here. So as you can see, we are already quite close to the metaverse than we think. But the endless creative opportunities that this metaverse will allow us to tap into, will better and broaden our capabilities to new lens. So even if you don't trust me right now, all you need to know is that the digital immersive overtake is right around the corner. Thank you.